Hi everyone, this is Scott with, again, the Big One Daily News, January the 12th. Excited to be here. Uh, just going to be myself today, but I picked three of the best articles that I really enjoyed uh, looking up today with some information on there that I feel is important. So this one's just going to be a short episode today. I do apologize, but yeah, this is good stuff still nonetheless. So last time we actually talked about this uh, political party starting to use NFTs and different things like that. So Dapper Labs becomes the first NFT company to register to lobby with the U.S. government. Earlier this week, NFT marketplace monster and flow chain blockchain creator Dapper Labs became the first NFT company to federally register to lobby with the U.S. government. Uh, Dapper joins a growing list of influential firms within the cryptocurrency industry that plan to change rules and impact new policies. Based in Vancouver, Canada, Dapper Labs offer a variety of non-fungible token-based products and dApps. The company is most likely known as the maker of NBA Top Shops, which allows users to buy digital cards that represent NBA, play, NBA players and moments. Users can then buy and sell some of their cards to other players. So this is kind of interesting that they went in on this and it just kind of explains with tax season right around the corner and increased government chatter around crypto globally. Many people in the crypto world are waking up to news of heavy regulation and policy, which I mean, I understand, but in the same sense, like this is smart on their part to get in there to start pushing the, the ability to use NFTs in in working with the government or lobbying with them. So I think this is going to be really interesting to see what they come up with, what kind of project they come up with. I think this also has to do with uh, these different parties using NFTs as like funding projects for themselves. So let's see what happens. I'm kind of excited about that one. And then my second article is actually on Solana. Solana could beat out Ethereum to become the visa of crypto, Bank of America. So Bank of America gave perhaps the highest praise a major US bank could bestow on a cryptocurrency. It compared it to the world's largest credit card network. Solana could be the visa of the digital asset ecosystem, Bank of America global crypto and digital asset strat strategist, Alexa Shaha, I'm probably not saying his name right, I uh, wrote in a research note published Tuesday. He cited more than 400 decentralized applications on Solana networks, which hosts everything from peer-to-peer -peer exchange to NFT marketplaces. Ethereum, meanwhile, could become the blockchain for high value transactions and identity storage and supply chain use, he wrote. So this is kind of interesting coming from somebody that's part of a banking talking about Solana, talking about kind of like the NFT aspect of it, the speed of it. I think this is impressive. It's a really great article. I am seeing too, there's an increase in Solana's price by 7.14%. So that's kind of interesting as well. And this last one, I really got a kick out of this. I don't know if anybody wants to go to the Golden Coast in Australia, but this might be your way in. A sushi fan, be the first in the world to purchase a retail store with crypto. An Australian sushi chain are selling their Gold Coast shop in exchange for cryptocurrency. They claim that it is the first case in the world of a retail outlet being exchanged for digital assets. You better like sushi a whole lot if you buy this. So uh, Australian retail chain Sushi Sushi are trying to flog one of their stores in exchange for AUD $1 million or $730,000 worth of crypto. If you are the buyer, the chain claims that you'll be the first in the world to buy a retail store using digital assets. Uh, the shop in question is located on Cavell Street in Surfer Paradise at the Gold Coast. And I just read a little bit more into this earlier before coming on here. The, the cool thing, I guess, about it is you're not going to have to operate the store either. Uh, Sushi Sushi will continue to operate it. So all you're getting is the, the money from the store. So the profits that they make from it, uh, they're just going to give over to the person that owns the store. So you will receive 100% of all net profits made during the time you hold a part interest in Sushi Sushi Kavil Ave. 
You don't even need to see the store to buy it. So all you crypto investors living in strange places in the world, you can just dump your crypto on Sushi Sushi and off you go. I mean, I wouldn't highly suggest not just dropping a whole bunch of money on a store, especially if you haven't seen it. I'm sure there's some regulation in Australia as well as other places that might suggest that you just don't drop it in there. Uh, I would definitely try and form some kind of business or or something to take on these assets and, and do what you're doing. Uh, you don't want to frustrate somebody else by just jumping in there. Uh, lately on CoinGecko as well, we'll just look quickly at this for you guys. Uh, see how the market's kind of doing right now. Oh, this is really good news. The global cryptocurrency market cap today is $2.2 trillion. So it's up 3.3%. So the price is still going up, you guys. Just be aware. Take your time. No rush. Let's see what the markets do. Uh, there is still a lot of uncertainty. Interest rates are still really um, haven't been impacted in the States yet. But the inflation rate is growing exponentially. They are talking about 100 times uh, strong, or it's been 100 years since it's been as high of an inflation rate as right now. So just be careful, you guys. Uh, just monitor everything. Uh, some people are taking solid positions just in stablecoin for the time being until they know what they want to do. Uh, my suggestion is probably the same kind of thing. Like, if you're not wanting to take the risk at the moment, wait, wait a little bit longer. I mean, it's not increasing exponentially faster and going like a rocket right now. So uh, we can just continue to watch this. Dominance on BTC is 37.7. ETH is 18%. So it's kind of interesting. It's dropped down to from 40% to 377 So there is other cryptocurrencies obviously moving into the dominance factor as well because ETH doesn't seem to be picking up a lot either. So there might be a new dog to be watching for you guys. Uh, I'm not 100% sure who it could be. It could be Binance. Uh, it could be any uh, token out there that's starting to sh take a share of that uh, market share. So let's keep an eye out. Uh, I hope you have a continuing good week. Uh, the markets are going the way everybody wants them. Uh, AMM marketing, again, please come check it out on Big One. Uh, we are going to be throwing some big events here right away. Uh, some different uh, projects that we have on board to actually do the AMM with. So just keep an eye out. I'll be doing some announcements soon. I think we might do a little bit of an education on it as well, just to understand it a little bit better. But it's just a way to get more users into certain projects and give you a higher return in the end. So, I mean, it's an amazing way of doing things. But, yeah, uh, I hope to see you guys. I know I'll see you guys tomorrow. So I hope you have a wonderful night. Thank you for tuning in. Vivin will be back tomorrow. Uh, he just had something time up today. But I hope you have a wonderful day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.